It's the difference quotient. That's all this is. This is just the difference quotient. What's the key difference between this difference quotient and the difference quotient you have seen before? Yeah, there's a U1 and a U2. So both, both what are changing? Both, both the X and the Y are changing. Both the A and the B, the X component and the Y component. What have we done so far? We've kept one fixed the entire time. So this is just the difference quotient where both things are moving. Now, I have emphasized a few things. First of all, I've highlighted the, uh, the U1 and U2. What do you think the most important word is on that first line? Unit. 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 That's the really, really, really important thing right now. The really, really important thing is that the direction you're going in, I could give you a direction not necessarily in a unit vector form. So I could say, go in the direction i plus j. Is that a direction? Sure. Is i plus j a unit vector? No. No. What's the magnitude of i plus j? It's root 2, right? So this definition, the way it's written, the way they're setting you up is with a unit vector, is with a unit vector. Now the key thing is not only that it's a unit vector, but that you just follow your intuition. And you remember when you're doing um, when you're doing difference quotients, it was a lot of algebra, and you were hoping to be able to cancel what? What was the one thing in there that you were really hoping to cancel? The H. The H, right. Why the H, Tomas? Because H is zero. H is going to zero, right? And you want to be able to get to the point where you can plug it in, right? Yeah. And can you plug in zero right now? No. no. Not right now. Not in, without doing algebra, you can't, right? So you hope that you can cancel the H, right? You hope that you can cancel the H, and then once you cancel the H, you're like, hey, I can evaluate it finally, right? Okay, so let's do one of them using this definition right here. Let's do one of them using this definition. Here it is. So find the directional derivative of that function at that point in that direction. What's the direction? I plus j. Sema, is that a unit vector? No. What's the magnitude of I plus j? The square root of 2. It's the square root of 2. Okay, so the first thing we do is we need to turn the direction into a what? unit vector. So we don't want to change the direction, we want to turn it into a unit vector. So what is our unit vector in that direction going to be? You take this vector and what do you divide it by? Magnitude. The magnitude of root 2. So the new vector is going to be 1 over root 2 i plus what? 1 over root 2 j. So if we use this definition right here, if we use this definition, the first, hey, do we, did we agree with what's right here? Is that the same thing? Yay! It is the same thing. We, we okay so far? So now what we have to do is we actually have to do the function f of a. Oh, what is a in this, in this example? What's a? a, b is the point you're doing the derivative at. So a is going to be 1. And what's b going to be? So what you're literally going to do now is plug in these values into this new difference quotient. That's all you're going to do. You're going to plug it in. How, did we, how, how does this look? How's that? It's not bad, right? Because what is this? There's your a value, right? And what do you have right here? Here's your b value. And then what are you plugging in right here? You're plugging in, oh, it's 1 over root 2h and 1 over root 2h. Are they always going to be the same like that? No. They just happen to be the same because our original vector had 1i plus 1j as the direction we were going in. So it, they do not have to be the same. They don't have to be the same. And then you're subtracting f of 1, 0. And now it's just algebra, everybody. Now it's just algebra. The function is x squared plus y squared. Yay, exciting. You plug things in. Hey, you have to square this. And you have to square this. And then you have 1. And look, I'm even, I'm even doing the algebra for you on this one just so that you don't have to relive all of the challenge of doing this algebra. Do you see the blue cancellation right there? Why is that blue cancellation so, 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 so helpful? Because now you can cancel out the h in the denominator, right? Remember our goal, as stated at the beginning, was we want to get rid of the h. But in order to get rid of the h, we need to make sure all the terms on top have an h in them. Ah, what happens once we cancel these terms? What? Oh, they, all the h's cancel. You're left with this. And now what can you plug in for h? Zero. Hey, this goes to 0. And what am I doing right here? Why am I multiplying by root 2 over root 2? What's that called? What's that? What am I doing? I am rationalizing the denominator. It's just nice because 2 over root 2 actually turns out to be the square root of 2. That's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. It cancels you know, with root 2. So you didn't need a calculator to find the rate of change in that direction. Okay, how are we feeling about this algebra right here? How are we feeling about this algebra right here? 
it's not bad, but like I just don't want to. Yeah. So here's your abs. So the reason I wrote it out is specifically so I didn't kind of unearth too much trauma. Because here's the thing: is this a rather well-behaved surface x squared plus y squared in terms of complexity? Could they get a lot worse? Yeah. Ready? I could change one number in there. If I changed one of those squares into a cube, what happens to your algebra? Eee! You don't want to do it, right? Like if I change that to a cube, all of a sudden you have to expand that cubic out and then hope everything cancels still, and it will, but is it a lot more annoying? Yeah. Yes. Do you remember when you first learned the difference quotient, you would do it over and over again, and then your teacher showed you like the power rule, and you were like, I hate you, right? <laughs> do you remember that? Yeah. And that's specific setup so that you kind of appreciate and know where, know where it comes from concretely. I'm not going to put you through that because you kind of know what's coming. Like there's a quicker way to do it, okay? The quicker way to do it comes from this block of text. And I am not going to go through all of this text. It is just heavy notation. And the reason I'm not going over it is because some of you will under, read it once and get it. Some of you will understand certain pieces. Other people will understand different pieces. And all of you will come at it from a different place. For me, the example I give, it's like me reading Faulkner. I have to read it like 100 times. And then I'm like, oh, he's talking about a bench. Great. Thanks a lot. Here's the payoff, everybody. The payoff is this. If you take the difference quotient that we had before. Here's that difference quotient that I just showed you. And you, general, you solve it in the general sense. You reduce it in the general sense without plugging in a specific function. You end up with this right here. And this is the thing. If you walked away with only one thing from today's class, you walk away with this. The rate of change in the u direction at AB is going to be fx AB u1 plus fy AB u2, where u is a what vector? It's a unit, unit vector. vector. It has to be a unit vector. It has to be a unit vector. Exactly. It has to be a unit vector. OK. Why is that really nice? Well, do you know how to find fx on a function? Uh -huh. Do you know how to find fy? Absolutely. Can you take any vector and turn it into a unit vector? Yeah. What was that What was that surface we worked with before? It was f of xy. What was it? It was x squared plus what? y squared. And what was the point? 1, 0. And I think the direction we were going in was i plus j, right? Yeah. So what was that unit vector? It was 1 over what? Uh, and it was 1 over root 2 what? So let's say we use this definition instead. What is fx on this SEMA? What's fx? Yes. And what's fy? So what does this definition tell us? It tells us that f in the u direction, right, is going to be 2 times x. But what is x? What's the point for x? 1. So it's 2 times 1. And what is u1 in this case? 1 over root 2. What's fy? 2y. But what is y in this case? So it's plus, sorry, 2 times 0. And just to make it complete, it's 1 over root 2 again, right? What happens to that second term? What happens to this term? Zero. It's zero, right? What are you just left with? Two over what? Two. Which is? Two. Is that the same answer we got before? Yep. <laughs> yeah, better be. <laughs> we got two over root two before. It's right up here. We got two over root two right there. See? Root two. So did we get the same answer? Yes. Absolutely. Is this going to be a little bit quicker than using the difference quotient? Yeah. I mean, think about it. How many derivatives have you taken in your calculus life? Hundreds upon hundreds, right? Do you always use the difference quotient? Effectively, the only time you use a difference quotient is you have no rule to go on, right? But now we have the product, pr product, quotient, chain. He's over five minutes late, but at least he got here. Generally speaking, generally speaking, when the book gives you a vector called u, it's going to be a what vector? Yeah, okay. yeah, it would be a really nasty, stupid, nasty thing for them to do to give you a vector called u and it not be a unit vector. That being said, can you do the math in your head to prove that's a unit vector? Yeah, what's 3 over 5 squared? Well, 9 over 25 plus 16 over 25 is 25 over 25. We okay with that kind of fraction work? We're okay with that? So at least it's a unit vector, right? So in terms of this definition here, though, what do we need to take on? What do we need to find now? F what? X and F. Are these relatively straightforward to find? What's Fx in this case? What is it? What's Fx? Just Y, right? What's Fy going to be? Right? We good with that? So what's fx at the point 1, 2? Two? Two. 2. What's fy at the point 1, 2? One, 1 plus, uh, what is it? 13. 13. Hey! And then what's our directional derivative? Well, we don't really like writing it like that. What's a better way to write it that would help us a little bit? 3 over 5 i, I plus, oh, minus, right? 
minus 4 over 5j. So now we just have to plug everything in the right place. So if we plug stuff in now, what do we end up with? We end up with fu uh, in at 1, 2. See, it never gets old. Um, equals what? What's fx at 1, 2? Two? 2 times 3 fifths, right? Plus what? Negative 4 over 5, like that. So what it ended up with? 6 over 5 minus what? Minus what? 2 over 5? So what's it going to be? Negative what? Come on, what is it going to be? Come on, what is it? 46 over 5. Good job with the fractions. You guys are like, ah, stop it! Thought this was calculus. Not